Thank you, Mary, uh, Miriam, for sharing faith with our children. I think the more our kids can hear about our faith and trust, the better it is for them. Faith, the assurance of things that we truly hope for, the conviction of things that we do not yet see. Where does this assurance come from? Can we just force this conviction into existence, this assurance by our own thinking, by our own work? Or is faith rather sought on our journey, experienced as we live, and then affirmed from above? Let us pray. God, we seek your wholeness, your peace, and your purpose. We want to walk by faith. Show us how to do this. Give us the gracious gift of your faith so that we can traverse through the dark valley and glorify you, our maker and redeemer. In your name we pray, amen. Like Miriam said, God told Moses to take off his shoes because it was holy ground. This is a good thing to reflect upon in this fifth week of Lent. What does make the ground holy? And like Miriam said, it is God's. What makes us holy? What sets us apart for God's special purpose? We long for a life that glorifies God's God and blesses our world. This is a piece of art that Anna got me, and it is called Congregate. And I love it because of all the shoes. Some of the shoes look a little bit like wooden shoes. The galoshes. In Holland, it rains 250 days a year, and we knew very well the boots that we wore out in the mud and the shoes we traped through in the rain were to be taken off at the door, both at our home and at our schools. When it was a serious rainy day at school, you could just bring your house shoes, take your galoshes off, you hung them under your coat in the vestibule, put your slippers on, and you were good for the day. It didn't have to be a special day. Anytime the rain was coming down heavy, that was allowed in school. Congregating coming together. I love it when people have the rule, take your shoes up at the front door. It is inconvenient. But there is something really nice about that tradition. And Stacy and I have traveled to places where that was just the rule in the country. When you came to someone's house, you took your shoes off. And they might have a whole basket of slippers you could put on. And in the house, no one was wearing outdoor shoes. I am glad that we congregate weekly to explore together how to live more fully in gratitude for God's gift of life and grace. When we gather together and show respect for each other, we are honoring our creator in whose image all of us are made. I hope that we always pass peace among us as we gather together, giving thanks. In today's gospel reading, shoes are also removed. Jesus' feet are washed and anointed with a very special perfume. And this is done by someone who fully adores Jesus. Jesus had brought her brother, Lazarus, back from the dead. And Mary had set aside money, saved money, to buy pure spikenard to honor Jesus before his burial. Now, spikenard is an expensive perfume that is distilled from the nard plant that grows in the Himalayan mountains in India. And it is expensive because it traveled 4,000 miles to come to the Holy Lands. But Mary was willing to sacrifice her money 
and by this to honor Jesus who she adored. This expensive oil was sometimes stretched by using cheap oils, and sometimes it was counterfeited altogether. But both Mark and John state in the Bible that the perfume used on Jesus' feet and Jesus' head was pure, genuine nard. So it was pricey. Let us read today's scripture that nowadays is called Mary Anoints Jesus. Out of the Gospel of John, chapter 12. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and he kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Jesus had been predicting his death numerous times in different ways and different places. But in life, when we are not ready for information, it frequently does not register with us. And that must have been the case concerning Jesus' death with his disciples. His followers were not ready for that message and they missed it altogether. His words fell on deaf ears. Jesus had said, this bread is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Jesus began teaching to them, saying, the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, but Peter took Jesus aside and rebuked him. Later on the way to Jerusalem, Jesus said, the Son of Man will be betrayed, condemned, handed over, mocked, spit upon, flogged, and killed, and three days later rise. The message of his coming suffering was so missed that two of his close followers, James and John, ask Jesus obliviously to the suffering that was coming if they could have the best seat in the house, if they could sit on his left and his right side. They did not realize the path Jesus was on. But Mary sensed the message of Jesus' upcoming death and suffering. She prepared to honor him before his death. First, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus honored Jesus with a dinner in their home. They surely all three loved Jesus deeply because Jesus had brought Lazarus back from the dead. Martha served, it said. Lazarus was fully present at the table. And Mary, with humble adoration, must surely had gotten on her knees to wash Jesus' feet, to pour this expensive perfume on his feet and honor him by drying his feet with her hair. Mary 
is adoring Jesus before his suffering. And Judas Iscariot vehemently and self-righteously protests this act of adoration by calling Mary out and declaring her loving act a terrible waste. Jesus, J Judas, who had been stealing money from the bag of their resources, was not being generous towards the poor. And Jesus silences his self-righteous, thieving bully by saying, leave her alone. Her gift is honoring me. God surely knows our hearts, and self-righteousness will never serve us well in God's eyes. God knows us. Might Mary's humble awareness of the heaviness on Jesus' shoulders at this very time have lifted his spirits as he honored him with this gift that cost her dearly. Might her awareness of his sorrow and this compassionate deed that she did, gave him be what inspired Jesus to take off his own robe, to take up a basin and water, tie a towel around his waist, and bow down and wash the feet of all his disciples on the next Thursday, right after the Passover meal. God lifts us up in our broken state. When honor is bestowed upon us, it is easier for us to pass honor to others. When we are beloved, it is easier to love those who cross our paths. When we experience forgiveness, it is easier for us to forgive those who might stab us in the back. God wants us to know that in our brokenness, he accepts us. And God wants us to discover the gratitude for this gift in life. Humility sets us free to rest in God's grace. A Dutch artist, Vincent van Gogh, painted this painting. He chose a life of poverty. He loved to draw humble things. He loved the laborer who worked the land with their hands to grow their food. And in this painting, he is trying to honor the simple person who is cultivating food by digging in the earth. He wrote to his brother, the best way to know God is to love with a lofty and serious, intimate sympathy, with strength, with intellect, intellect, and one must always try to know deeper, better, and more. That love leads to God, and that leads to unwavering faith. Jesus knew that Judas was not speaking up for the poor. But his criticism of Mary was altogether anchored in something else. Jesus' closing statement, you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me, was in no way to instill an indifference towards the poor. Jesus is not endorsing inequality here, but rather he is alluding to the passage that Ed read from Deuteronomy. The scripture exhorts us not to be tight-fisted, not to be stingy, but to be open-handed to our neighbors in need who will always be with us. God invites us to be generous as he is generous when we see needs. But Jesus here is, is, is instilling an awareness 
that it is important to discern wisely when it is best to give what. And at that moment, as Jesus' death is approaching, it was good and gracious for Mary to anoint him. He was worthy of Mary's adoration, and he is still worthy of our adoration. May we, as we receive faith, do whatever we can to be vessels through which God's love flows and continues to bless those who are in our circle of influence. May we desire nothing more than to reflect God's love for God's glory. May we lift up the names of all people in our circle of influence who are despairing at this time. God, use our lives to let your grace flow on and bless others. Our congregation is welcoming two little ones at this time, Cal Alexander Hagee and Brooklyn Marie Garza. And surely they are people who God has given us so that we can pass his love Onto them, that our lives can demonstrate that God's love is great and God's forgiveness available. We are never saved by our own good doing, but we are saved by the connection to God. Let us pray at this time. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, you are our maker and redeemer. We know that we are not worthy, but we know that you bestow salvation upon us. May we boldly live in this grace. We pray this in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, three in one. The body of Christ bows before you in gratitude for all that you have given us. In your name, amen.